<laughs> so, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so, how does this work? Hey, there we are. So, I'm Guy Hewison, head up the IT at Brimac, and Russell alongside me here is the uh, Digital Services Manager. Between us, we've seen, been through the journey of implementing the new um, e commerce site last year, as Stephen described. Just very briefly, Brimac, um, we're a leading supplier in the building services um, industry. And that means we supply goods to the building services construction companies. So that means plumbing fittings, mechanical fittings, air conditioning fittings. And we're supplying into these big high-rise building sites you see all around you. Major challenges, we're still dealing with, you wouldn't believe how traditional the industry is, we're still delivering um, six metre long iron pipes that they weld together for all the plumbing, it's, it's incredible. Um, and we have to deliver those into inner city locations every day. Um, we have over 14,000 SKUs, I think it is. Um, many different ranges, each range has multiple sizes. It's quite a logis logistical nightmare, um, but we believe we do it pretty well. And uh, we offer a, where, where we win, um, <coughs> Mainly is we offer a next morning delivery for everyone. So our uh, chaps on sites can run out of a fitting. They can run out of a whole range of fittings. On their way home in the van, they can place an order with us and we'll deliver it to them. First thing the next morning, it will be there ready for them. Um, we, our van network runs out from the distribution centre early in the morning, gets into the inner city, London mainly, um, drops the goods five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. When the um, chaps get to site, the, the, the uh, items are all there ready for them. That's, that's where we've built up our main business. We're uh, very proud to say we won the um, HVR Construction News. Um, was it HVR News, was it? Yes. Yeah. Um, Distributor of the Year Award last year. So um, that was a great achievement coming up from a family business where Blimet was um, started in its current form in 2005, been going some years before that as a, as a family business, but very fast growing and um, trying to keep ahead of the industry. So, <clears throat> as Stephen's just said, we've just been through a e-commerce transformation journey. We started our e-commerce um, story back in 2013, 2014. We launched our first e-commerce site as a bit of a trial really, and blown away by the success, it grew. Um, our, as I described, we have chaps on site ordering that comes to us in various different forms. And there's, um, we even have situations where the, uh, the chaps on the sites need the goods, but they have to put a, uh, a works order or requisition into their purchasing office, who then have to place the order with us at Briomec for the goods to be delivered. So you can imagine that happening at last thing in the afternoon it's a nightmare for them, and especially when on site they've just been welding up these steel pipes and they're grubby and messy. They, they've got a scribbled list of products that they want and they just take a photo of that, send it through to their office. It, it's, been, um, it's been really refreshing to be able to give them a platform that they can do this all digitally. But um, I'm going to hand over to Russell now, who's just going to take us quickly through the, um, the reason behind the, um, why we needed a, a new e-commerce platform and um, just some of the requirements that we found along the way. So, Thanks, Guy. So um, for us, there were some key reasons why we had to, had to change. And we wanted a platform that was future-proof. So looking around there and speaking to different vendors, everybody said, oh, our platform is the best. We can do anything. Um, we wanted something that would support our business growth and support the roadmap we had digitally. So we had plans in place, for example, to replace our ERP system. So we needed something, a, a solution that would give us the flexibility to do that. Um, um, on top of that, there, was many, there were many drivers within the business. Um, and one of our key goals was to transfer as many offline processes online as possible. So whether it was a return order from a customer or whether the customer was raising an invoice query. It's all about making the customer transact online so that we could then have that 
holistic view, if you like, of that customer and everything they were doing with us. Um, and obviously, we wanted to increase the accuracy. So as Guy was saying, you have engineers on site who are then putting in requests to their managers, and the order would then come through to us. So in pushing this journey online, we're cutting out the risk of errors. So typically, an order might get transposed somewhat between the site and then their office and then coming through to us. So it's cutting out that, that, that margin of error. Um, so that's, that was something which we felt was really valuable to us and, and to our customers. And it was also, as we've got here, making ourselves indispensable to our customers. So giving them a platform which is integral to their business that really they, they couldn't do without us. So that, 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 that was vital for us. And ultimately, another driver was to in increase sales, which we've definitely proved. Anything to add on that? No, that's good, Carol. So as a, as a kick-off, we um, went through a discovery phase. So we went out and spoke to our customers to find out what their requirements were. Some of them had already used our previous offering, and some customers had stuck to traditional methods, such as email, telephone, and also fax. We had a lot of fax orders. Um, as part of that research, we discovered that the average age of the customer was coming down. So we had a lot of new blood coming into the industry who were more willing of this digital offering um, and much more embracing of it. Um, so we wanted to help them on their journey and see how we could help them on their day-to-day, -day, everyday tasks which they do, which would make them more efficient and ultimately us more efficient. Um, so some of the key features of that was the visibility. So giving customers the, visibi the visibility to be able to view all of their company's details online, whether it was their users, or their orders, or their returns, their quotations, and giving them that, that, that overview, if you like. Um, in addition to that, there was also bespoke company pricing. So we've got quite a complex pricing structure. I think at the moment it's roughly 14 million lines long. So that's very detailed, very complex, and we wanted a platform that would be able to cope with that, which we've found and successfully done. Um, customers also wanted to be able to view technical documents. They wanted to be able to look at a particular product, look at the in-depth technical details of that and download data sheets at their ease. Um, as we've gone over, the ability to view their own users, giving them different roles, different permissions. So, for example, they could give an engineer on site the permission to view products and um, <coughs> view previous orders, but then not be able to see pricing. So giving them that granular control over exactly what they want to give each of their users. Um, and the ability to be able to self-serve, so they can create quotations, orders, at any time that suits them best. As, um, as we said earlier, it's not 8 till 5 anymore, it's 24-7. It's if a customer wants to place an order at 1 a.m. in the morning, then they should be able to. And that's what we felt was key. And in addition to that, having a mobile responsive solution. So for a lot of our client base, we'd have customers work on a mobile device on a site. Um, so it's, we wanted to give them a, an experience that was much easier on a mobile device. And then if they had a laptop or a tablet, um, that would also be replicated. But we had to build it mobile first to give them that experience. Anything to add on that guy? No, I think that's good. Um, so moving on to what happened during the project, we actually spent a bit of time afterwards looking back with the, the, the Monsoon um, team, finding um, lessons learned. And we, we, we um, drew up a few ourselves from internally. And if it's of any interest to anyone, this is what we've come up with. Um, we, I would admit that we had a very long procurement process. Um, it dragged on far too long. And I would say to anyone embarking on a, an e-commerce project to um, get some definition early on, um, not only for efficient delivery of the project, but also to manage expectations, both, both of customers and internally, um, because our marketing team built up quite a head of steam to customers, and, and we had to deliver on that. And, and some of those features that they were speaking about were really challenging to achieve. Um, so, yeah, my advice to anyone setting out on e-commerce, a new e-commerce platform or any new feature development is to 
a very clear definition of the scope. Um, what we all say, and it's very true, tackle the complexity up front. We had um, massive challenges with our ERP system, which is a bit of an archaic system, unfortunately, which is another story. But we had integration issues that we overcame um, to the best we could. But that was something that doesn't need looking at up front. There's no point in getting... Well, in fact, we, we had a couple of issues three quarters of the way through the project, and, oh, we can't do that because we can't integrate. But if that was tackled up front, it would, uh, would have saved time. Um, don't underestimate the amount of work in content mapping, in, in uh, providing all this information to our customers. The information has actually got to be there and in the right form, in the right place. It's not magic. It doesn't just appear um, like our management <laughs> thinks. <laughs> and we've spent many nights on it, yeah. <laughs> and the importance of testing. Um, we, our testing period at the end of the development phase got squashed and squashed and squashed because development ran on, ran on, and we didn't allow enough time. Um, it was good. And then the next point, we soft launched, so we, we picked on a handful of friendly customers um, ones that we work with a lot and that we know very well, and that was invaluable, giving us early feedback, a bit of bug fixing. Um, I'll recommend that to anyone. If we'd have gone bang live to everyone on the um, suggested go live date, we'd have had big trouble. Um, as it was, we had a very seamless cutover. It just leaped. people logged in one day and it was a new site. It was, it was awesome how it worked in the end. We were very pleased with that. Um, and it's very important to have a very clear onboarding process, I think, um, because our marketing team were very clear about this, but we've, we've invested a lot of money in this platform, a lot of money, and it's got to pay for itself. There's got to be a return, and uh, that does need work. People don't automatically run to Brimet because we've got a new website. It's, it's a, a tool we can use to enhance the customer experience. We can attract custom, but... The, uh, the marketing team need to be very aligned to what we're doing on the e-commerce <coughs> so that they can drive people onto it. <coughs> so um, I don't know if that helps at all, but that's, that's some of the things that we've learned in the journey. So, um, Russell, you could give us a little rundown on what's happened since Go Live. Go Live, we, we actually went live 1st of August, as, as um, Stephen said, and we've, we've continued doing small piece of development and we have some more features coming so it's a, a, a bit of an ongoing process thanks guy so um yeah since since go live so we as guy said we moved over seamlessly from the old platform to the new platform and we migrated all of customer all of the customers email addresses all of their passwords so there was from the customer side there was no difference from logging on so that it was completely seamless from their point of view um, we did have a very small dip in the number of orders and sales through the, through the new platform, which, which we expected. Customers were somewhat not familiar with how the new platform worked. Um, but we trained up our customer service team and our sales team in depth, um, which helped them guide the customers through this journey. And for some customers, they had to go out and give them training if required. Um, but at, it was really key just to, to guide customers through, through that journey. Um, we've seen increased efficiencies of orders coming through, um, and the, the, cust the customer engagement is great. We've had, since the initial launch, we had a few queries, but we have very, very few queries coming through now, and customers are happy to place orders online, look at previous orders, reorder from past orders, look at their account history, um, and the take-up of it is, is great. Um, the... Um, the driver really behind this is the ability for customers to be able to view the whole account online. So everything they can do offline, we're trying to move that online so they can view their colleagues' orders and they can view offline orders. So if they place a telephone order, they can then see that order online. Or if a colleague happens to place a telephone order, they can then go in and see what that colleague has ordered and then see what items are outstanding, what items have been delivered, and then they can also view a proof of delivery so they can see the items being delivered, who signed for it, it just gives them that, that granular control so they can see exactly, anybody can see exactly what's going on within that company. Okay. So, some of the um, further benefits. Um, I gave this 
heading to our marketing manager yesterday and said, we've got a presentation tomorrow. Can you put some marketing benefits down? <laughs> <laughs> and no joke, he came back with that within five minutes. So it, it proved itself. Um, we did talk it through, but um, and he, we were hoping he would be here actually to talk through this slide, but he's, he's not. So um, the great thing about the um, Magento platform is the visibility of activity. This is very much enhanced compared to our previous um, e-commerce site, which had none of this really. Had some analytics, but very, very poor. Um, dynamic targeting, so um, they can analyze feedback, the um, page view history, any, um, all sorts of abandoned basket history can be fed back into our CRM and they can target marketing based on that. Um, segmentation based on behavior and, and our, our audience is split into different um, categories of customer, which is great. We can actually have dynamic um, dynamic presentation of um, some of the graphics on the site, depending on who the customer is. And we will enjoy a much deeper integration with our ERP when our ERP is upgraded. Um, however, it is, it's, it's pretty awesome what, what can be done with, with Magento. And one thing they've said, a much more intuitive CMS. The content management is, is far easier on Magento than, than what we previously had. Um, so going on from that, um, one thing to be very clear about, and this is what we keep telling our management, is that just because we now have finished the project of implementing a new e-commerce system, <laughs> the game isn't over yet. It's constant refinement. And we've proved that even in the few months since our go live of the e-commerce site. Um, UX is moving target. There's, uh, as Russell said, there's a new generation coming up. The, the, our, um, they're living and breathing digital. They're um, completely immersed in, in um, online. The, uh, the trend is being driven by B2C, as we've already had. And in fact, it's becoming the norm. It's the expectation. Um, and we can't, we can't ignore that in B2B. If, if we've got these um, millennials coming on, trying to place orders, they're going to view us as dinosaurs if we're not moving with the times. They really will. It's just, a, um, it's just happening. If we don't, there's a digital revolution happening. We, we can't ignore it. If we, if we don't ride it, we'll sink. It's, it's, um, it's clear that we've got to remain ahead of the game. Um, so we're trying to look at ways to replace old working practices that in our industry have been tradition for years and years with online capability. And what's great about it is, is from a marketing perspective, we like to have this personal approach to customers. You know, our sales team go out and speak to customers face to face. They write them personalized letters. With digital, we can deliver this at scale. We can just turn up the volume. We can ramp it out to millions more than they can do running around sites. So uh, it's here to stay and uh, it's here to grow. Um, one of the major things for us as well is accuracy. Um, as Russell described, our um, customers ordering all manner of, we, we could give you some demos, but we haven't got any here, some scribbled out bits of papers that get faxed through, believe it or not. Um, now we've got end users on site selecting product codes for us and it comes through to our ERP system as an order. We don't even see it. It goes straight down to the operations team. It's great. It's the efficiencies it's driving through the business is massive. So uh, we're really trying to um, ramp up the onboarding process, get more and more people online. It's in, their, it's in their interest. It's much more beneficial to the customer. And it sounds obvious. In the, in the B2C world, it's obvious. You know, we all go on Amazon, eBay. Why not apply it to B2B? It's just... We're so far behind in construction, uh, and I guess there's many other industries here, but in construction, we, we need to work hard to uh, drive this digital change. Um, so what we're looking at, obviously, we're looking at refinements. Um, I expect Daniel will talk about this um, constant refining process. Um, there's all sorts of exciting things happening in the digital world, chatbots, voice recognition, we can't ignore it all, why not just apply it to our industry? Um, it's exciting times really, and we want to remain at the forefront of that. So 
with the help of the uh, developers and the platform, we, we hope we can achieve that. So, I'm sorry, we're not sort of experienced keynote speakers or anything. If, we, if, we, <laughs> if we've missed anything, please shout. Um, and if there's any other questions, be free to ask. So, that's pretty much our case study. We actually do have some time, and the guys will be on. Yeah, sure. The guys will be on the panel later on, and there'll be some questions there, and obviously an opportunity to dive deeper into the case study. But we have some time, so if there are any questions now, the guys are, are free and available to ask them, particularly them as they've just gone through the presentation. Is anything occurring? Yeah. One question, if you don't mind. Thanks very much, guys. It's very, very uh, insightful. Were you ever tempted to go B to C, learn your mistakes with people you didn't know, rather than to annoy your customers on the B to B side first? That's an interesting question. Um, no, we weren't. We did go through quite a. Um, an uncertain period where we were not sure whether to split our business and push B to C first, like you were saying, so go for um, an online store-based model and then see what happened with that and then move to the B2B. But actually, w we decided that that wasn't, our, that wasn't our market. We weren't geared up for that distribution-wise. Um, so we were fairly sure of ourselves in that we tested the B2B with our previous website, which was a, pretty much a homemade effort. Um, and really all we were doing it was transferring what people are doing manually onto online. So whilst there was quite a resistance from some real traditional people, most people saw the sense in it and most people lapped it up. Does that answer the question? In short, no, we didn't try B to C first. We went straight into this. So you really weren't... I mean, a lot of people might go B2C first, make the mistakes with the general population, and then when you're ready for the B2B, you've made the mistakes and made the uh, Yeah, who dares wins is what we say. <laughs> 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 Rick, can you add to that, Russell? No, I was just going to say, we did try on the previous platform to do B2C. We were selling to people who could, could pay there and then for the goods, and the amount of orders that were coming through just wasn't worthwhile for us. We thought rather than trying to segment our customers and give different service offerings, we decided to let's focus on what we do best, B2B, and push the other customers That's to one side. Thing to say as well is that <coughs> primarily the guy's business is, is, is on account. So the vast, vast majority of your business is on account. So it was a more easy transition over to a business-to-business e-commerce platform where everybody's on credit, everybody's on account. So it's, it's, it's not that there's a large swathe of your customer base that would be traditionally paying cash, you know, and, and the guys would have, wouldn't necessarily have a big distribution network or retail sites and stuff out into the marketplace. They run, they run D DC and then directly into London and out to the sites that the, their customers would be working on. So that's maybe slightly different to maybe other businesses who have potentially a consumer proposition available to you know, jobbing builders or, or plumbers who are coming in without credit and coming up to the trade counter and maybe buying stuff. You know, I think you guys have a trade counter, but it's not necessarily a big part of your business. So that's Correct, a, yeah. maybe a difference there and just sure. maybe how business, the business might be set up. Yeah? Is it much about an obvious uh, difference in the customer experience when they log in? I mean, I, I know a bit about what you guys do because um, we're representing a similar trade. Um, our customers got much more, much more of a focus in well, the whole uh, range, you know, the gamut from uh, you know, DIY and single um, enterprise um, organisations, people literally ordering from their van and so on. Um, so, it, for question one is: Is there a very different uh, online experience when people log in for the two sectors of the business? And also, do you st are you still very actively promoting your sales counter or counters? Have you got more than one? No, we're not. Trade counter is very, very, very small. It's more a collection point. Yeah. So click and collect? We don't actually literally have click and collect. We do, um, customers can place orders online for collection, um, but we don't offer it as a click and collect service. Mainly because we only have one distribution center in one location, so it would have limited catchment. I mean, our customers got very, you know, they've developed very strongly through their branch network, which is quite big in the southeast. And, um, 
I don't want to lose that customer experience. I think it's quite important. There's certain, you know, I still believe there are certain products that people, I wouldn't say they'll only buy from the trade counters, but they'll still want to buy from the trade counters, if only for possibly product error uh, ordering for the smaller companies. Um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to ask you this then, mm. but did, you know, you, uh, your branch management have got sort of involved, they're actively involved in Yeah. So, um, all I can say, and this sounds like a very different business model to what we have, is that um, yeah. what I would do in your situation is analyse what you do and see how much of it could be made personalised online. I'm not, I, you know, we're advocating online obviously, but you're right, it might be that there is a requirement for um, physical trade counters, but what we're finding is this generation coming up, <coughs> some of them prefer a faceless ordering, they prefer to do it out of hours. The challenge for you then is to provide that experience online. <coughs> um, how can you make an online trade counter in effect? And we went through this. We went through this very, um, very detailed. In fact, I remember doing storyboarding. Some uh, literally an online trade counter experience. You're literally walking into a trade counter and viewing the shelves on your screen. Um, and we dropped that, you know, because it's not really our our model. But they're, they're, for sure, there would be ways to do it. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I'll you. Pogging the conversation. Um, it's, thank you very much for, um, for all this. I, I do want to have a personal, I'm, I'm, I'm admitting the same, same company. Okay. So, um, what, I'm, what I'm interested in, I think I read in your accounts that you had aspirations to go national um, over time. And I'm wondering where this fits in your overall strategy to do that and whether you've actually seen some, some wider audience get involved other than your kind of retail. I think you're more sort of London based at Coulston you're based in is the distribution centre and then it, it's mainly London area that you deliver to but uh, I'd just like to know how how that you know how this fitted into that sort of strategy of maybe going a little bit wider in your potential distribution. Yeah I'm not sure I forgot that so we are we offer the next morning delivery service nationwide but the the um, our ultra fast delivery service as we call it is our own driver network in London <coughs> and the South East um, so I rephrase the question then, go go the on. question is much more about how how is this online um, platform and enabled you to make better sales in the, um, the wider country wider across the country yeah yeah um, in many ways it hasn't, it's just enhanced it. Um, it's still up to our marketing and sales teams to go out and get the business. Um, we have a slightly unusual situation where we would have um, a customer based in, let's say they're based in um, Dublin. They could be based in the north up here, they could be based um, out in Suffolk somewhere. So the customer's based there and their registered account is based there on the system and everything, but all their work is in London or all their work is in the Midlands. Um, so it's a really weird situation. Yeah, that's so you're delivering to, basically your responsibility is to deliver into, into site and the yeah. responsibility yeah. then obviously to yeah. a company account. Yeah. So they, they could be running eight, nine, ten sites or more and they're ordering centrally from their maybe their central office yeah. in, where, in, in Suffolk and yeah. then those deliveries are then being sent to those seven or eight different construction sites. And even the address, just going through the process, like some places you're you're building on Greenfield, like there is no address. <laughs> yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> you know, so, so you're, you're building on a piece of grass, you know, and <laughs> ground field, you know. So like even just the idea of getting the product is a challenge for the guys, I guess. Even getting the product from their warehouse of DC out to the customer, and they're dealing with kind of large scale mm -hmm. projects, I guess, as well. So in terms of the e-commerce, um, it's not geographically specific at all. Um, the main issues we've had um, are around, as Stephen said, the delivery address situation. The rest of it is up to the operations team. How they get it there is their problem. We offer this service, we guarantee it nationwide. To create the demand, they've got to fulfill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, I'm sorry to hog, one, one more thing. I, I'm just conscious we're over, we're now, we're now into coffee. Are we? Uh, <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have like 50 minutes, a lot of that for Q&A. Yeah. Just one quick one. 
you had a question, yeah. Yeah, I did. If you had to pick one feature that you added to the new platform and the development that your customers responded to most positively, what, what would that be in the, on the user experience side? I would, ooh, that's a difficult one. Yeah, Either viewing offline orders, right. that was one really key one which we came to loud and clear, and the ability to manage their own users. Those, those two things were vital. Yeah. yeah, so in the new platform, our customers can create their own teams. They can create new users for themselves. They can give those users different permissions. So that's one important point for our customers. Um, some of the customers have got subcontractors working for them on sites. They don't want them to see their pricing, but they want them to have the ability to place orders. They want them to have the ability to possibly not place orders direct, but through their purchasing office. And we've created all that within the e-commerce platform, which is all visible to us, so it's great. Great, okay. We'll take, thanks for it, guys, thanks very much. Really appreciate you um, telling the story there.